Moses came into certain manifestations of grace. He went to the mountain two times for 40 days, not eating, not drinking. Came down at a point with the glory of God visibly upon his face. But the Bible tells us that God then decided to take up an operation in the book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and verse 17. And we are told there very clearly, it says that the Lord said unto Moses, he said, gather the 70 men of the elders, who you know to be elders of the people. He said, and bring them to the tabernacle of the congregation. Let them stand there with you. And what will I do? Verse 17. And I will come down and I will talk with you and I will take of the spirit that is upon thee and I will put it upon them. You may have labored to get that, but I will take the grace and I will place it upon them. Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Being Real George. In case you're meeting me for the first time, I am a trend analyst. Now, I know you might not have understood the video you watched before seeing me, but as we go on, you're going to have a clearer picture of what it is you're talking about today. Today, we are moving away from Nigeria. Even from the next video to come, we are going to be going to the US, a couple of other countries as well, to see what is happening there with regards to what is being shared in church. And the main purpose of this is to ask you questions because I believe most of you know too well better than I do myself. Now, today we are asking an important question in the faith, which I think is very important. The whole idea of tapping anointing, tapping grace, or would I say people functioning in the spirit of their fathers in the Lord, or those who are been or those who have been made church leaders. Of course, some of you that have been following me over time have seen me analyze cases of people who think that to a great extent, if they listen to me or maybe listen to my analysis sometimes, and it makes them maybe disagree with whatever their papa has preached before, that the spirit of their papa protecting them would leave them and then maybe open them to demons attacking them or something. <laughs> We've seen videos like that here on the channel. But today it's a different game all entirely. I won't call it a game, I would just say it's a different thing entirely because I've listened to an amazing man of God, you see? Some of you think that I come here and I attack people or I try to defame men of God or something. No, I watch every piece of content you watch yourself here. But when I see that some things are very controversial or would I say not really really what i am used to i make videos about them and talk the difference between you and i like i always say is that i make videos about my opinion why some of you only stay in the comments but i appreciate my amazing wonderful subscribers and viewers that keep coming back to one more or the other engage in my discourse about things that are happening in church now this is a trend that happens or that has been happening not even now like years back come on you've heard preachers say they had to be on that kenneth higgins ministry god servant our father has shared over and again how that in the year 1986 was privileged to go down to a meeting where kenneth Copl kenneth higgins sorry was ministering and he had one desire, Lord, whatever it is that makes Hagen Hagen, I want it. Of course, if you have been following me over time, I've talked about this principle of having a reference point. You understand? Now, a lot of people have said things about late T.B. Joshua with the fact that, okay, he doesn't have maybe a link to, okay, he came from here or that kind of thing. So his whole idea of ministry before he died and all of that was always questionable. That's why Khan didn't accept him or something. But we looked at videos about T.B. Joshua long ago, so I'm not talking about that now. When that happens, there will be manifestations through them. Because I'm building this thesis around what it is that we know happens in the faith. Most of you watching me right now are upcoming pastors. I read your comments. I see Pastor this, Prophet this, Evangelist this. So some of you know this thing. So I believe you are familiar with this whole idea of tapping anointing, tapping grace, functioning in the grace of this person or that kind of thing. But today we are going to be looking at it, breaking it down. Not me, myself, but with the help of someone that is also a minister, a well-known minister in Ghana, Pastor Mensah Otabel, okay? When I was living in Ghana, some of you don't know that I had my first degree in Ghana before I had my master's degree here in China. So I got to be under his ministry a whole lot. I had friends. 
they don't start to <laughs> i had friends that used to go to his church and you know i got to know his person and how he is always on the message of grace now the question we are asking like i just mentioned right now is do you believe at the end of this video please do tell me in the comments do you believe in the doctrine of tapping anointing or tapping grace or functioning in the grace of a particular man of god you have had an encounter with you know these days i hear things about from christians and it hurts me pastor kingsley it my heart gets wounded people say even to me they say things like pastor i want to tap into your grace Man of God, I want to tap into your grace. Sometimes they'll come and hold your, your feet. I want to tap into your grace. I say, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? My grace? Where did you read in the Bible about my grace? Or Pastor Kinsley's grace? It's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, how we can read the Bible and still be foolish, I don't get it. It's not as if the Bible is a secret document. It's there, written plain. Why? Paul, I, Paul, the apostle of Christ, by the grace of God. By the grace of God. I mean, and then you come and say, I want your grace. I'm tapping into your grace. Tap into my grace. Me, mezzo, tap my grace. Are you mad? When I live by the grace of God and by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have to tap into grace, commonsensically go to the source. What's wrong with your head? If you need grace, go to the giver of grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Your pastor himself, he stands by the grace of God. The prophet prophesied, he stands by the grace of God. The gifts manifested in us, it is by the grace of God. But you know, we have taken our African traditional religion into Christianity. We always want a fetish priest. Who goes to hear from the deity? And then, I mean, that is African traditional religion. It is not Christianity. We don't go to hear from God to come and tell people what God is saying. God speaks to each one of us. We all hear the sound from heaven. And the Holy Spirit rested upon each one of them. The fire was upon each one of them. It filled the whole house. It was upon each one of them. And then the next thing is that it affected their feeling. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, the experience is shared. The sound filled all the house the fire sat upon each head and they were all filled no one left behind no one mediating for the other nobody intervening for the other that is the new testament this is not africania religion this is bible new testament there is no mediator between us and God except Jesus. It is by his grace that we live. Because we are going to be going into this whole idea of how to be a successful minister and all that. So I have a lot of things lined up for you to come after this video. So in case you have not subscribed to the channel, I don't know, you are going to be missing a whole lot. Now, thank you so much for taking your time to listen to him. Now, I had to take my time to really make sure I find the video myself. While this video was trending on Linda IKG blog, I had to go to his channel and, you know, find the original copy so that I play for you 
the part that really, really is significant. Now, I don't know if you heard him quite all right, because this is something that I have been talking about over time right here on the channel. You see, you hear him talk about the whole idea of using common sense. And I've told you guys already. Now, C.S. Lewis once said, and I quote, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen. Not only because I can see it, but because by it I see everything else. If you don't understand the idea of Christianity that you can use, or would I say function by the grace of Christianity to be able to understand life itself, to be able to understand everything else itself, you might be missing it. That is why, to a great extent, it's as if we place someone else like us, a human, a man like us, before Jesus, before God the Father. And it all brings us back to the era of the law. If you understand the fact that you are living by the grace of God, when it comes to even the anointing for whatever, for success in business, for this or that, it is all by the grace of God. And that is how some men of God are able to use this particular ideology of tapping into the anointing, tapping into their grace and all of that to monetize the gospel of Jesus Christ. You guys watched video about, I talked about the whole trend with regards to the Ikoi building collapse, how Pastor Matthew Oshimolowo has used the same story of someone that is prominent, someone that is well known, popular in a particular field of real estate or whatever development to share testimonies or his testimony. I don't know how they have their relationship or if they had a contract that, okay, I'll talk about your story every time and then I'll easy to read seats or something. But you, you guys could see that it wasn't just once or twice, but using the same story to always raise seats or offerings in the name of, you know, my hands is gifted or if I lay hands on you, you are going to be functioning in a particular amount of grace or in a particular amount of success. But he heard Pastor Mensah Tebel talk about you having a direct access to your father. You see how he explains the whole idea of what happened on the Pentecost. Because if we are not able to use our senses, if you are not able to understand these basic things, that is what keeps some of you, like I see in the comments, who come to argue and say all sort of nonsense, keeps you under the bondage of your papa. I respect every man of God I talk about here. I have no personal beef or personal issue with any of them. You see, but the thing is that they are as wise as they are doing what they are doing for the reasons they are doing them. But yet those who follow them are so blind. That is why sometimes they come to attack me. Why? Because I'm opening people's eyes to something that they are not seeing, which is a psychological thing they are able to manipulate people to do. But yet the people themselves are not wise enough to see these things. We just stopped here um i like keeping a puzzle at the end of the video right now i'm at the office editing this um some of you would think that um the idea of me playing oedipo's son's um message um is that he doesn't believe in the grace of god of course it, um, before he talked about the grace that is on the father of the ministry and how his relationship with kenneth um Hagen and all of that he started by talking about the grace of God, but then later on took um, the message to the Old Testament because the title of the message itself is the impartation of grace. Okay, so of course, based on the head of the ministry, you have to now make reference to you know the head or the person that act like how he always says, um, the father who has the mandate or the mandate on the ministry. Okay, so of course, I do understand that and I understand. The psychology in that all right so let me play the video where he talks about the grace of god using the new testament clearly the bible tells us there what maketh thee to differ from another and what has thou that thou didst not receive that is why you can say very clearly that in this kingdom there are no achievements there are only engagements what distinguishes between one believer and the other is their contact and the walking of the grace of God. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, Paul the Apostle speaking there said, I am what I am by the grace of God. The maker of destiny is grace. And this morning, the grace of God as is found expressed in this commission, will come upon your life. 
It's also important that we recognize this morning that every grace that you see upon God's apostles and prophets is what flows through the mandate that is given to them. So when you see the expressions of God upon any mandate, it is simply a validation of the kind of grace that is upon the apostle or the prophet set over that mandate. But in, of course, when someone is preaching something, I'm not saying whether what he says is false or right, but I'm just asking questions. But making you at least understand the fact that this whole idea of functioning in someone's grace or someone's anointing or something, you can, I know you have many stories you have in the Old Testament, but as you heard, Pastor Mentor, what about preach? We are talking about the New Testament now, where it's not about having a link or association with someone or something, because I'm going to be opening your eyes to a whole lot of things that have been happening, but you don't see them happen. Why? Because you don't pay attention. So